It is so windy out that Frank was blown to Costa Rica. Again? Again. He's in Costa Rica again? again? No, he's yeah. in Costa Rica still. Apparently the plane couldn't fight the wind. It was way too strong. Oh. Had to stay. It must be It must be a long conference. What is it, two weeks he's been there? I, it's been, I think, uh, a week Sunday. Like, they're home tomorrow. But oh. this morning he had some ATV <clears throat> event. Oh, does, oh. It, does ATV stand for something to do with a conference? Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, oh. is that a new mortgage? The is that, ATV yeah, the mortgage? AT, ATV mortgage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Must be nice to be Frank, eh? Like, you know, it, once again, I had to buy breakfast because Frank is not here, of course. <laughs> wait, yeah, but wait, he's wait, saving wait, wait. up. He's saving up. So in, in 2022, I believe he's bought breakfast once. How, hey. can, how is it Barb didn't buy breakfast? That's my question. Uh, I got a call this morning at 9.30 yeah. telling me her order. She, <laughs> she's like, hey, Paul, by the way, I, I don't want breakfast, but I'll take a coffee. And could you buy my cheese bread too, please, like Dora did? Yes, I heard Dora <laughs> bought your cheese bread, yep. Yep, she bought my groceries. Speaking of Dora, she's having a wonderful time right now in Spain. Well-deserved time course. away in Spain, yeah. so good for her. That's awesome. And she's still getting back to clients, so that's <laughs> impressive. Oh, she was sending out team emails the other day saying, you know, just sold, blah, blah, blah. Can we order the sold sign, please? And I'm just like, Dora, you're in Spain. Go enjoy. So How long is she there for? They're away for a little bit. They're can yeah. can you guys talk about this later? Yeah, we can talk about this. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> People want to hear about real estate and mortgages, not about Dora's travel life. So <laughs> But we did have we did have a very epic uh Paul Rushforth real estate uh Christmas party last night. Nice. We, we rented nice. we rented out Giovanni's and had some good uh, food, some good wine, and then we went over to the comedy club and had some great laughs. And it was uh, good to see all the smiling faces. And hopefully they're not all hung over this morning. Like you know, I'm chipper this morning. This would be your expanded team. Expanded team, yeah, with with uh, the the people that came over from Tracy's team, Tracy Arnett's team, and we had a great time, and they got to meet everybody, which is great. Uh, and you know, in this COVID world, you just—I mean, Barb, there's probably lots of people that have joined Mortgage Brokers Ottawa that you just haven't even met, yeah. right? They Sometimes get... I see the names on the sales leader list and stuff, and I'm like, "Who's that?" I mean, yeah, I don't—I've never I've been, met them. I've been there 15 years, like you, yeah. think you know most people, right? Yeah. Well, it, it's funny. One of my one of my admin staff who does the weekends at the front desk. Uh, he's been working for me for almost three months now, and I met him for the first time at the Christmas party last wow. night. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so it was awesome. It was a lot of smiling faces, and uh, Greg's here videoing me and filming me this morning. Hope he's chipper and feeling good. <laughs> yeah, might be a little hungover, but now, whatever. Talking about not seeing people, now the government has come out with how much less we're driving these days compared to what we were doing pre-pandemic. Is that affected where people are buying homes now? So during the pandemic, everybody was, not everybody, but there was a huge push to the outskirts. As we saw, we talked about it at nauseum. People were driving out to, you know, in the West End, they're going out to Pakenham, Armprior, all these areas in the East End, going out to Embrum and Limoges and all that. Um, and it's, it, you know, when, when the, I'm not going to say that when the pandemic ended, but when all the, when we got more comfortable. yeah, when we got more comfortable living with it and the restrictions were eased and people, some people are going back to work now and they bought it in the outskirts and are like, geez, my travel time is, is crazy. My gas prices are through the roof. It's cost me, you know, used to cost me, you know, 50 bucks to fill up my car. And now it's 120 to fill up my car. So we are seeing a few people come back into the core again, but you know, during the pandemic, we saw tons of people looking in the outskirts, which drove the prices in the outskirts up. Uh, I, we're starting to see a few more people now moving back to the core because their work is asking them to come back to work. So it's, uh, you know, but it's... But people are not necessarily working five days a week at the office. There's a lot of people now, a lot of models out there that are like a hybrid model. I'm not sure what Frank's doing at his office. Am I a hybrid model. Yeah, so in, in my office, I... I, I I mean, I kind of leave it up to them. I like to see them back at the office, um, but, you know, I, I'm... That, a, it, to me, that's something. Like, you've got to see people. Uh, that's I, it. For, for, you, know, you, know, the, day, you, you know the biggest part is culture. Culture. Like, oh, I, 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 yes, I find over the last two years, pre-pandemic, we did an event every single month. We were always around each other. We saw each other all the day in the office. The team was so close. During the pandemic, it, it just it shifted to where no one saw each other, no one was in the office. Now people are still staying away from the office. The culture, not just in my company, but in all companies, the culture is, is struggling a little bit because you don't see people anymore. And it's, uh, and I, you I, can I, zoom all you want, but the brainstorm is it's not, not No, it's not the I same. I would rather work at the office. I like going to the office, the camaraderie, and the also like batting things around. Hey, I got this deal. I've got this, I've got this challenge. You know, have you seen it before? Have you done it? Yeah. Have you, because... You know, with all the changes, deals are changing too. Well, that, that was probably, Barbie, one of the things that during the pandemic, things shifted so quick to where 
people had to learn to do things so differently. Like, uh, you know, technology just took over during the pandemic. Like, I mean, did, did you ever hear Zoom before the no. pandemic? No. Not really, right? Like, I mean, I used to Zoom Not with- regularly. No, like I used to Zoom with my coaches and stuff like that, but it was kind of like, oh, what's this platform? And then during the pandemic, it's now, now it's like, hey, do you want to talk? No, let's just Zoom, yeah. you know? So now it's, but, but the changes during this pandemic the, the shift in technology uh, made people do things totally different. And the problem now is we're continuing to, to do it the same way now that we can get together. I mean, I mean, look at my company. We haven't had an in-person meeting in three years. Like wow. in, in three years, we haven't had an in-person meeting. We used to, I built this huge boardroom in the basement for in-person meetings. And like, I haven't seen, you know, there's, there's, there's one gentleman on my team who's uh, very, he's, he's uh, immune sensitive. And so he, we, I haven't seen him in three years. I haven't seen him live in three years. Yeah, and to me, Zoom just doesn't cut it. It doesn't cut like it. In a, in a situation like that where you want to meet with yep. people. Right? Yep, And you know what? Clients have gone back from being like, okay, you know, great, during the pandemic, we can meet on Zoom and that, but I don't want to meet in Zoom anymore. Like, you yeah. know, let's... I like to know people are wearing pants. Me too. <laughs> me too, you know. You guys did your show from Zoom for how many shows? Oh, two, two and a half, half years. years. Two and a half yeah. years. And it wasn't so, the same. It wasn't the no, same. No, it's not the same. You don't no. get that. Well, you don't get that in-between time where all the fun really happens. Well, we didn't get to see Frank age like he aged, right? Like, it's just, oh, we, we miss that. Oh, yeah, Excuse yeah. Me, Mr. Glasses, <laughs> <laughs> Barbie, I just wear glasses. Once I hit 40, it went downhill, you know? We put the glasses on, and I walked behind him, and his phone text is, like, uh, huge. <laughs> I don't find it huge, but... Uh, Either do I. I thought it was small, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My text, right? So, yes. Yes, yes, thanks. So now that people have done the outskirt thing, and now that the world is changing again, are we going to see more of an influx towards closer? Yes. To this, like, more Canadas? Yes. Yeah, we will. Um, you know, the only thing that will stop people moving into the core will be prices. And, you know, right now, if you are, you can't afford the core, you go to the outskirts. But the, what happened was when people were... But it's were, not that much different anymore. It's not that much different anymore. It used to be a huge variation. I mean, it used to be, let's say, you get a townhome for $350,000 back before the pandemic. Yeah. Like $350,000 in the core, or you go out to the outskirts and get one for 175000 So there, there was a big difference. Now that difference is gone. Um, you know, there's still a difference, but not as much. I mean, builders are building feverishly out in the country, um, and their, you know, their, their prices are high. They're high. I think that will change a little bit as we see more people move into the core, gas prices are through the roof, people don't want to drive anymore, they're back at the office, so they're moving into the core now. So we're gonna see a few more people move into the core. It was nice to see people adjust and, 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 and change and go to the outskirts because for the longest time, Steve, when you and I were selling our houses out, yeah. in, the, out in the country, like, we sold at a time where it was it was a struggle to get people to move out to the country. Nobody wanted the acreages. Nobody wanted the big properties. Nobody wanted all that. They wanted small, compact, in the core. And and the pandemic brought that. That the pandemic changed that. They took more people out to the country. More people were moving into bigger homes. And they wanted property, which was because they wanted some space. They wanted some space, and they had families moving in. So they looked at bigger homes for the longest time. Nobody wanted bigger homes. They wanted bigger homes. I think that'll shift a little bit too as people get a little bit. More more used to living with the with COVID and all the diseases and all the things yeah. that are going on. I think we're going to see, you know, families are now starting to separate a little bit. People are moving back to the core. So we will see a bit of a shift from the outskirts to the core again. Um, but I still think people got used to living in the country and living in, in yeah. the outskirts, which is, is which is fine. I mean, which is awesome. Are you seeing first-time homebuyers go smaller in the core or try to get to the outskirts? I see a lot of getting to the outskirts. It depends on your affordability, right? Like some people, if your affordability is on the lower end, then you're looking at the outskirts and that's just where you are. Whereas if your affordability is on the higher end, then, and you've got the down payment to support it, then you're trying to get into the burps and, and the core and stuff. And who's got that these days? Who's got that these days? It's hard with rent the way it is. It's really hard to save. You know, I get, I get clients who have significant savings and I actually say to them, congratulations, like congratulations on buckling down and saving what you can. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It's hard the way the world's going right it's now. Hard. Yeah. But you almost have to save one salary if you can. Big time. But I'll tell you one thing we've been doing a lot this week. Greg and I have been shooting videos about, you know, now's the time to buy. And it's, uh, I, I strongly believe with the way the prices are going. 
regardless of interest rates, now's the time to get into the market. Yeah, we'll talk about the forecast yeah. for, for 2023 coming up. And we have a... Did you know? Bounce. Go wow, wow. 521-TALK, 521-8255. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. It's a portion of the show that even Frank tunes into. Does he really? From oh, Did you know? From Costa Rica? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? I think he tunes into here. Bound chicka wah wah. I hate it when he listens. Bound <laughs> chicka wah wah. All right, here, did you me. know? All right. Did you know that if you are in a scenario where perhaps your affordability ratios don't quite fit, we have options with alternate lenders that take you to extended ratios that can help you in times where things might seem a little bit more difficult to qualify, we can get you into a short-term, more affordable ratio experience than going with the standard A letter. Give me, yeah, get, yeah. Exactly. Well, give us an example. What do you mean hard times? Like, are we talking divorce? Are we talking divorce, death of a spouse, something like that? Your mortgage comes up for renewal, and you need you want to keep your house, and you don't qualify on your own income, but you're close. So, if you have a mortgage and a spouse dies, you have to requalify. You have to requalify in some circumstances. Yes, it takes two signatures to requalify on the wow. mortgage renewal. Do you need a completely new mortgage or can you just requalify with the same lender? You can requalify with the same lender if you qualify, but if you don't, then we have extended ratio options where you're close to qualifying and the rate's a little bit higher and there's a small fee which we add into the mortgage <clears throat> amount so it's not out of your pocket, but it allows you to keep your home. So you just pay a little bit more interest. You pay a little bit more interest. And the spread right now is actually, I mean, a three-year right now, depending on when you think things are going to change or if they are going to change in your income scenario. The three-year is 624 versus, you know, 5.5, 5.69 on our renewal. It's hard to believe we're talking about mortgage rates in the sixes and fives right now. Like It's it's crazy. Well, like, because it's so fast. Yeah. It like a year ago, we were, were what? Oh, you, no, well, a year ago, we were, you could get a five-year fix for like one and three quarters. Like yeah. it was, you were under well, 2%. Was, yeah, on the twos. Yeah. But, it, but it was... Yeah, you could sure get a variable for one and change. Yeah, for, for a sure. lot less than you can right now. Just yeah. to know that there's options. Like there's, if you're being told by your bank it's not going to work, then there are other options out there for you. Short-term options, longer-term options. There's additional, like I said, there's there's a small fee which can get added onto the mortgage and the rate's a little bit higher, but you can stay in your home. And if you if you were to see your circumstances changing and making more money, say, within a year or two, could you just get a one or two years? Absolutely. We try to keep, with any alternate mortgage, we try to keep them to one or two years because there's always an exit strategy, right? We're going to put you in this, but I call it Band-Aid financing. It's just a Band-Aid to get you out of the scenario where you are. It's Maybe, a whole lot better than losing your home. Exactly. If you don't want to lose your home or if you don't want to do the chip mortgage, right? The chip mortgage is more expensive and depending on your age, how much you can actually access with the chip mortgage. But the options are out there. Are people going to see lenders right out of the gate now because that's the only way they'll qualify? Um, some must be. Some would be. Some are, I mean, this takes me back to my favorite, did you know, where you're less than 65% loan to value. When you're up for renewal, make your calls. Call in. Call around. See what you can get because... I would only make one call. So mortgage yes, broker. mortgage brokers, Ottawa. There we go. Dot exactly. <laughs> you know what, Barbie? I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually shocked because part of our job is... You know, part of our job is being like a pseudo mortgage broker as well. Like our job is to say, okay, great. We're shopping for a home. Have you talked to a mortgage broker? You'd be shocked at how many times we ask people, have you talked to a mortgage broker? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm locked in for a five-year fixed mortgage at five point blah, blah, blah. So I have no idea. Well, no, but they're, they're locked into a five-year fix. And I'm like, hold on. Did your mortgage broker talk to you about a variable rate mortgage or a short-term mortgage? Nope. They told me the five-year fixed is the way to go. I'm like, really? So the rates are super high right now. They're on their way down very soon. Yeah. And they're talking yeah, about locking that. you in for five years at this high rate. I'm like, you need to change mortgage brokers now. Yeah. You know, like yeah, you're not uh, uh, would be the banks that would probably recommend the banks, and and there's I'm sure there's uh, Frank will tell you, Barb will tell you, there's some mortgage broker companies too that will, I mean, they make more money on a five year fixed, right? So I'm telling you, and that's one of the videos Greg and I are shooting is just like 
You don't take a five-year fixed right now. You don't. It's the stupidest thing you could possibly do is take a five-year fixed right now. Rates are coming down. We're at an all-time, not all-time high, but we're at an all-time high over the last you know decade. We're at an yeah. all-time yep. all yep. high. Yep. And, and there's nowhere but rates to go but down. Yeah. I mean, we know on the December 7th, it's probably going up another half point. Um, so a quarter. May, I'm hoping a quarter too, but let's say it's the worst case scenario, it's a half point, which I think it's probably going to do. Yeah, I think I think rates are at the highest they're going to go. I think the only way we have now is stagnant and down. So if you lock yourself in a five-year fix right now, you're making you're a huge it. mistake. Especially five-year fixed is, I mean, I find it's good, not necessarily in this rate environment, but first-time buyers who are taking to their max affordability, who can't afford the fluctuations of the variable, even though you're qualifying at a higher rate, it's let's just know what your payment is. Again, not necessarily in this rate environment. But let's just know what your payment is, and that's what you're going to pay for five years. You're a first-time buyer. You're going to likely keep your home for five years, especially with the way the markets are going. So it, it does have a place, but right now the variable is great because you take the variable, and when rates do come down, you can lock in. Plus, that gap is closed now between the fixed and the variable. Yeah. But but you, but but you say that the variable is the only mortgage you can take right now where it is going to come down. If you yeah. lock where your, at least you have a chance. Yeah, you have a chance. Yes, people. There's there's mortgage brokers and bankers out there that are saying, oh, you want to make sure you have that constant payment. Take the five year fixed. What they don't tell you is the rates are coming down. Yeah. Yeah, the rates don't tell you that. The, the, the rates are coming down. You take a variable right now, which is. Most bankers will tell you that's not the way to do it, but that is the way to do it. I'm the real estate guy, not the mortgage guy, but I'm telling you the right way to do it. The rates are coming down. You take a variable or a short-term fixed mortgage, and you'll be in the driver's seat in one, two, three years when the rates are at the low again. And that's what we're seeing. More yep. variables, more one and two years, that kind of thing. That's what we're seeing. Well, that's because you guys are doing the right thing. Well, there's a lot of people of out there that are. aren't doing the right thing, right? Like there's a lot of people yeah. out there not doing the right thing. And, and, and again, it, we've got like prime minus 90 on those less than 65% renewals. Like prime minus 90 is 5.05. .05. There's, I mean, yes, it's still in the fives, but you've got that option to lock in when rates start to come down and... Or ride the variable down. Or ride the variable down. Well, even according to your website today, 504 for a fixed on a uh, an insured one, 120. Yeah. And a five-year variable, five, it's even below a five-year fixed. Oh, prime minus 95. Yeah. 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 Which is awesome. Yeah. Which is awesome. And, and you know, I've said... Yeah, I wouldn't... Why lock in long-term when you you're can. at the absolute peak, or at least yep. what we think is the absolute yep. peak? Yep. You have nowhere to go. I mean, you're paying that for five yep. years. Yeah, but it just... it just Even it, if it comes down half a point in variable it three, just, it, six months from But now, it, boggles my, it boggles my mind that how many people out there are locking themselves into these five-year fixed at five point something something, and they're stuck there when the rates come down and everyone's getting a five-year fixed for 3.2, and you're stuck in that five range. And the you're, penalty. Yeah, you're going to kick. Out. The penalty is going to be huge. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Is the qualifying yeah. just the same for a variable as it is for a fixed? Yep, 20, 20 points. So what do you have to qualify at now? Oh, God, 705. Wow. Seven, depending, 7.6. Yeah. Like, that's, depending what kind of variable you're getting. It's crippling. And that's why you're seeing so many people sitting on the sidelines right now. There's yeah. so Dang, many people sitting on the sidelines. So I'm telling you right now, and I've been I've been screaming this for, for the longest time. We saw in 2021, in October, November, December, when the market was a little bit tough, people weren't buying. Nobody would have would have foreseen what we saw in Jan, Feb, March, and April of 2022. Yeah. The market went insane. I'm telling you right now, and I said it last week on the show, and I'm telling you right now, you got six months to buy. Six months to buy, and the market is going to go bonkers. What we saw in 2022 is going to be child's play compared to what we're about to see. I, I'm telling you right now, we're seeing a depressed market right now. Perfect time to buy. Yes, sellers are, are, are a little bit grumpy and angry right now. It well, is, that's where a buyer wants a seller. That's yeah. where a buyer wants a seller. For the longest time, for two years, the sellers were in the driver's seat and were laughing at the buyers. Right now, I'm telling you, buyers, you're in the driver's seat. Get into the market because what you're buying right now is going to be way, you're, it's going to explode in the latter part of 2023. Going into 2024, we are going to see a epic 2022 start of the season what we saw there it's going to be on steroids come 2024 so i'm telling you right now you want to get into the housing market right now there's lots of great deals out there i, I did a search for i don't have to go to break here but we i did a search for townhomes 
in a certain area, I don't want to say the area because it's it'll hurt people who are listed in that area. In a certain area for a client this week, there was 27 townhomes in a small little pocket, a small pocket, and it was a race to the bottom. And we are seeing homes that were in the sevens. I saw them listed at 575, 565. Wow. And, and don't forget, if two of those people are in really tough, in a really tough yep. spot and they lower their price, to, it changes the entire They price. lower it to 550 and it sells for 550, there's a new benchmark. Yeah. So get in now, people, get in now. I'm telling you, I've been telling you now for the last probably month and a half, yep. get in now. 521 talk, 521 8255. Bow chicka wow. Bow chicka wow wow. Welcome back. Paul Rushford this year. So is Barb Kramer. In for Frank, who's a Costa Rican. Costa Rican. Is, is Frank back next week? Frank has another. Yeah, Hawaii um, next week, maybe. Another uh, conference with the air quotes here. Um, <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, I do the air quotes too with Frank's conferences. That's awesome. <laughs> I believe it's in Toronto. I think he's back on Thursday. So, but he's back for the show. Yeah, I believe he's back for the show. Okay. Uh, oh, well, yeah. so that, okay, because I won't. Wait a minute. Uh, What's I won't, the problem? I won't be Breakfast. here. I won't be here next week, so. Um, was it next week? Yeah, I won't be here next week, so uh, Frank is going to have to pull out his wallet and buy breakfast next week. <laughs> well, hey, I'm looking at some of the forecasts for next year. Yep. Some of the forecasts have Toronto going down over 11%, almost 12%, and they have Ottawa going up 4%. Yep, I would agree with that. I would say uh, Toronto, well, you know what? I do agree and I do disagree a little bit. We have 450,000 immigrants coming to Canada by 2025, they want to up that by 500,000 every year. And a lot of those immigrants are coming to Toronto and Vancouver. They need but that's going to have to change they, eventually. They need somewhere to live. And and I think that what's going to happen, I don't, I don't see Toronto going down 11%. The problem with Toronto is their prices were so out of, out of whack. We saw a lot of Toronto people moving to Ottawa because their prices were way out of whack. Uh, but I, with, with the immigrants coming into Toronto, I can't see them going down 11%. That would shock me completely. Ottawa being up 4%, yes, I do see that. I don't. Which is above average, right, for Ottawa? Which is about average for Ottawa. You know, when you know, for the longest time we were up, you know, one, 1 1.5, two, 2.5. Uh, you know, the last few years we've skyrocketed. Um, but it, being up 4% is what I call healthy. Oh yeah, it's very. And don't healthy. forget, it's 4% of seven or 800,000 compared to four or 500,000. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, when you looked at the years where, you know, the average sale price was 130,000, I mean, that's a different story. 4% is nothing, yeah. right? But when you're, when you're at 700,000 as your average sale price and the numbers for November aren't out yet, but when they do come out, I, I probably expect that our, our average sale price took a bit of a hit in November again. Uh, but still, you know, last, last month, at the end of the month, we were at 699,000 as our average sale price. So let's say 700,000. You add, you know, 4% onto that, you know, it's $28,000. That's still a healthy increase, right? Well, it sticks with your theory of the market going bonkers and to buy now. Yep, right? absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I've been saying this now, and even though, you know, you read the press, you read the, all the news clippings, you read, you watch the news, you listen to other realtors, you look at the mortgage brokers, they're all saying, oh, don't buy now. Rates are so high. Don't buy now. But what they forget to tell you is what you used to pay seven twenty five for is now six hundred. Yeah. Why not buy it now? You see, right? a skeptic would say, well, you're in the real estate business. Of course you want me to buy now. Yeah, but if that's not the point. The point is, is I, you've seen me over the years on this show. I'm all about building wealth for people, yeah. right? I love seeing people build wealth and I'm telling people right now if you want to build wealth our prices are probably very near rock bottom right now where you're now when I say that if it was two years ago if I would have said you know you can get a townhome for 600 grand I'd be like what yeah. 600 grand I'm not I'm paying 600 grand for a townhome but 600 grand for a townhome right now is a steal right it's a deal because uh, you know like I said when I did that search for a client this week and I saw them in the fives I was just like oh my god 565 for a townhome and it's been on the market for three weeks you can get this thing for a song, you know, so... A lot of it is time of year, too, though, right now. Right? It is time of year, too. And, I mean, like, we are, you know, even with our listings, I'm having conversations with my sellers every day saying, we're in a slow market in the slowest time of year. Don't panic. Like, we're, it's, it's going to change. But it's hard to tell a seller who's bought something and they're closing in January to just relax and, and calm down. It's hard. But it's... I, I'm, I'm telling you right now... Do think, you anticipate we're going to be blanketed with listings in the new year? A lot more than we are right now, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah a lot more this than we are. This is typically so, a slower time, though, right? Yeah, People so we're, but we're right in a real timing thing right now. Yeah, for Even sure. Even if you're going to well, sit for Christmas. another two or three weeks, you better be ready to go by January. Yep. Fifth, maybe? Uh, usually I say our market by the 10th to the 15th is already in bloom. It's already spring market. You know, you can take off from Christmas to the 10th, 
and then it's time to rock and roll. But you got to get ready is what I'm saying. So oh, even yeah. If you don't want a list right now, and I know it's a busy time of year, but you better be preparing what you want your house to look like so that you can yeah. get the ground running. Right? Absolutely. And, and someone come in and tell you, yeah. do this, this, and this, keep the Christmas decorations to a minimum. Well, and we've, and I've, like, with Greg here right now, my photographer, videographer, he's he's going into houses right now that he's doing videos and, and photos, outdoor photos for these homes that are getting ready to list in Jan, Feb, March when the snow's there. Be, like, look at the weather. We still have snow. We still have grass out there. We yeah. still have somewhat decent gardens. I'd say not really, but it's... No, it's, but it gives you an idea of landscape. Right? Landscape, yeah. So, I mean, if you're thinking of listing in Jan, Feb, March, uh, you know, get get Greg in the door now while, while you know, the it still looks decent outside. You can still have some sort a curb appeal you don't just see the snow but it's and the information right <clears throat> what do i really have to do to sell this place and you're going to be a minimalist right you're not going to tell somebody to do something no that. no I mean, has it changed though like it used to be that you had to do stuff to make it sell What's changed that now you don't have to do stuff? Well, now you do again. It, Barbie, it's now changed again. again. Yeah, it's changed again. So like during the pandemic, I'd walk into a house and I'd be like, so I have to do this and I do this and I got to do this. I'm like, nope, put it on the market just like his, but this is ugly. Perfect. Put it on the market just like it'll this. Go. It's, it'll go. It'll so go. the appetite for, for fixing things up has come back a wee bit. It's come back big time. Yeah. Like people are now looking again for that home that's that's upgraded, that's, that looks tickety-boo. Like it just, th that's that's what people are looking for again. So uh, the one thing that we'll do is if you're looking to list in, you know, Jan, Feb, March, we will come through your house now and say, do this, do this, do this. But a lot of the things we're going to tell you to do don't cost you a lot of money. It'll be inch, little things like decluttering, depersonalizing, most likely some painting, some light fixtures. Um, take just, the carpet out of the bathroom. Yeah. Take the carpet out of the bathroom. <laughs> what about the carpet versus the hardwood in the upstairs? Mainly well, it's hardwood now these days, yeah. right? Yeah, it is a lot of hardwood, but I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I don't mind the carpet upstairs. There's a lot of, there's an appetite. It's noise forgiving for sure. Noise forgiving for sure, but there's also an appetite for warmth. Like when you get out of bed in, in the morning and, you, and you're, you have hardwood, sometimes it's like, I, I have hardwood throughout my entire house. When I get up in the morning, it's cold. Yeah, that's what area rugs are for. That's well. <laughs> oh, Steve, the decorator. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. The dull carpet in the bathroom. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, and you got to live in your own house, boy. <laughs> That oh, rule, yeah, that rule, live in your own house. that rule comes in uh, January 1st, where if you sell your house within 12 months, you're paying capital gains with a couple of exceptions, like uh, death or divorce, or you get transferred. But if you just, there's no more flipping within a year, you got to pay capital gains on that. Pay capital gains, and I, everybody's got to go on and register in January. Yeah. What is my house? Do I live there or don't I? Here's the thing. Well, no, that's a different one. That's, oh. that's the municipal one where you're going to get taxed 1%. If you don't live there. Yeah, for vacant homes. The one but I'm talking about is, oh, okay. is, is federal okay, now. Okay, forgive if, me for that. If you don't live there within, yeah, try to pay attention. Yes. <laughs> so let me... It's going quickly. Let, quickly. Let, let, me, let me play devil's advocate on that, though. So they're now bringing in this rule that if you, let's say, flip a home within the first year, yep. that you are going to be taxed on that. Yep. So would you not agree that when you flip a home, usually means that you've renovated it, you've made it nicer, you've increased the curb appeal, you've enhanced the area, you've made more taxes for the government through property taxes, you've you've done you've done you brought up the prices in the area. Probably made it more energy efficient. Energy efficient. So is there a problem there? Yeah. Like I, I don't that that's the one. Uh, and yeah, why hurt investors? Why hurt investors? And I guess it's an investment then. It's not a principal residence. So if you're a, if you're a business and you're an investor, you got to pay tax on your investments, right? You know, Steve, I just I'm trying to get ahead here. You know, like I, 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 you know, how do you get ahead? You know, that's that's one thing I disagree with Canada and the states. I mean, I talk to some of my American friends, and they're just like, "Do you are you guys allowed to make money in Canada? Like, are you allowed to be an entrepreneur and actually build a business and build wealth, or or, or do they try to squash you every time you try to build wealth? It is. They, they try to squash you everywhere you go. So my argument to that would be, I understand what they're trying to do. But my argument to that is you're enhancing the area, you're beautifying the home, more taxes, more jobs. You've hired contractors, you've hired window people, you're giving people more business. And people uh, want to buy already ready to go. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay, so yeah, you're, you're taking a dog off the market. And, and so you've made a little money out of it. Like, oh no, slap my hand. I've made a little bit of money, but I've given someone a beautiful home. I've enhanced the area. But the other side of that is you're still making a little bit of money, but so is the government. 
Exactly. You know, you're paying capital gains on that most likely. If it's not your principal residence, you're paying capital gains, you're paying the government. Like, why stop that? I, that's what I don't get. And but it's been sort of an unwritten rule that most people knew that if you were going to flip a house within a year, you're probably going to pay capital gains. But now there's a 12-month cap on it. Yeah. It's a hard cap. If you do it within 12 months, unless you, somebody dies or you get divorced or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, you get divorced. You get maybe divorced five, six times over the next five, six That's years. That's right. You're ahead of the game. I'm not going to. You don't have to pay tax. I'm not going to. I'm going to. I'm not going to mention any names, but I have a friend who has about 17 to 18 investment properties. Yep. My God, he's divorced his wife 18 <laughs> times. 18 times he's divorced his wife. My God. <laughs> it's like, you know what? But, hey, got to gotta get ahead somehow, you know? <laughs> See, I just divorce him. And I don't get the money. It just, That's the way, yeah. There's something wrong with my portfolio. Yes, yes. <laughs> my divorce portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in your next divorce. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That'll happen right away. Yeah. <laughs> Better flip a house. Yeah. 521 Talk, 521 8255. We will be right back. Welcome back. Paul is here. Barb is here. Hey, what about this 1% vacant rate uh, that we were talking about briefly earlier? Where Now, this is municipal, where if you leave a property, empty you have to pay an extra one percent municipal tax on it but that's principal residence yeah uh well it can't be principal residence it's if it's not yeah. your principal residence if it's not your prison so if you just leave it empty so if you leave if you leave it so empty I, I have if you've my got house, a vacant property i buy an investment property but i don't want to do anything with it yet it's just sitting there doing nothing i gotta pay an extra one percent yeah tax on it. here's where here's where the gray area is cottages Cottages, you know, what's the rule around cottages? Most of them are vacant for the for and the what's winter. What's a house and what's a cottage? Right? Exactly. Your, your yeah. cottage could pass as a house. Well, my cottage is a house, yeah. and you, you know, just call it a cottage. I just call it a cottage. I should start calling it. I, I should call, start calling it a beach house. <laughs> but it's but you're right. Like, I, am I getting taxed on that? I shouldn't even bring this up. So <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we're taxing Paul now for sure. But no, <laughs> not only did Paul have to buy breakfast, Steve screwed him out of yeah, the beach house. It. Steve cost me another one percent. My God, yeah. I'll just I'll. Pretend Pretend if I had one, yeah. <laughs> but you had an excellent point. How do you prove it? Yeah. How do you prove it? You know, like uh, I go to my cottage uh, probably once every seven, eight days. I'll go up there for the day or maybe even the night. Uh, so I mean, how do you prove that it's 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 vacant? And how know? many vacant homes are there really? Is it really even worth all this? Well, here's what happens: is they're they're talking mainly about Toronto and Vancouver. Is, is really no, this is our I know, yeah. but I know, but that's but that's that usual. that's that's what we're talking about here. I know it's our our. They're talking about Ottawa, but I'm saying if you're talking about vacant homes, usually that's Vancouver and Toronto. You know, you're because you have a but lot. There used of, to be Airbnbs, right? And now not so many Airbnbs, and now a lot of them are rented. There's a lot. And why of, would you keep it vacant when you could rent it? But there's a lot of foreign money who have gone into Vancouver betting and, on and betting on futures and they're buying up the property, leaving it vacant. They don't care. They got the money. They'll leave it vacant for a year or two years, knowing the market's about to skyrocket and they'll just, they'll just wait until just flip it's it. flip it until it's time. They'll just wait. And so, you know, bringing in Ottawa, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't know the number, but I would think there's very few vacant. I think it's very yeah. few as well. There's not a lot and of, how people. long does it stay vacant before you actually get the 1%? Tax? So when they were, and did they prorate it? They were, How long was it vacant for? And they were talking about when they were bringing this in, we're talking about bringing this in. I read somewhere that the house has to be occupied 100 of the 365 days is what I read. Now, I don't know if that's what they brought in, yeah. but that, that would kind of make sense. Um, but, I mean, who knows? And, 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 and I mean, try to prove it. Like, and again, flippers, like, you can't renovate your property and flip it in three months. Like there's a time frame there. It takes time to do that. Well, apparently now you can't do that because you're well, paying. No, you're, you're no, but pay. she's talking strictly from yeah. the time perspective. Yeah, especially yeah. now it's still hard to get laborers, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. If you you flip a property and you do it right, it's your minimum three months on the market. So I mean, it's. When was it's, the last time you flipped a property? You used to do it. I often. used to do it a lot, and uh, the last flip I ever did was oh god, probably 2016, 17. Is that because you can't find them? You just can't find them. And, and even me in the industry, like we, we see a lot of dogs and we see a lot of ugly homes, but it's like you just, in the industry, we just, there's not a lot of flips out there that make sense. And especially over the last two years, because, you know, a dog was worth yeah. gold, you know? And so you're not buying a dog that's worth gold. You know, you're, you're looking for a deal on an ugly dog. And, and that's, that's what you're looking for. And it's been really hard to find over the last probably three, probably three, four years. It's been hard to find those ugly homes for a good deal. I don't think flipping was ever a real big thing in Ottawa, was it? No, no, but, and you know. the lenders are on to you. 
Like the lenders are on to flippers if you're depending on if you're using the same lender again and again because that's where you fit based on their rental qualifications and that kind of thing. The lenders get on to you. Meeting. They don't like they don't like flips. They don't make the money out of it. Yeah. yeah. Right? They don't love it, but I mean if you're And they're all open mortgages, right? Well, they're, they're open or they're variable, right? Because you're flipping it. So depends. Depends what your scenario there, is. There's a lot of flippers that don't even need a mortgage, right? Yeah. Like I used to just buy my home through, through my line of credit. Like I, did, I didn't even need a really too much of a mortgage on those homes. But you're right. The You know, if you're flipping a property, a mortgage broker or a banker will look at that and be like, oh, yeah. You're getting it's rid of this. like borrowing twenty five grand for. <clears throat> yeah, they're they're like they'll, yeah, exactly. They don't. They're not eager to do it, right? If they're not making money out of, they're not eager to do it. So. What are the smallest mortgages they're doing these days? <laughs> there are some lenders that'll do fifty. Most of them are a hundred. Yeah. Wow. You just think of how times well, have changed, right? Where you, you used you used to buy a house for a hundred. Now you couldn't get a mortgage unless you're borrowing a hundred. <laughs> well, and it's with with rate shoppers, it's difficult. You know, if you've got a rate shopper and their mortgage is one hundred and thirty nine thousand. And I'm offering you 10 basis points better. It's 139 bucks a year, right? They're going to charge you 375 for the discharge. It's not always about rate. Mm. It's not always about rate. Sometimes it's just about by the time you, of course, the, the lender that you're going to, you're a full underwrite on their part because you're new to them. They don't care if it's 139 or 439. You still have to do the income docs, the mortgage statement, the property tax bill, the lawyer, all of that stuff. So the smaller mortgages, they're they're tougher to get the value out of a switch for ten or twenty basis points. What's an average mortgage you see these days? Ooh, I think I think I think Frank said last week he's seeing three, in the three, three to four, three three fifty yeah. four hundred. Yeah, 50, whereas before, like two years ago, Frank, I remember we we asked him that yeah, he's like two two fifty. Yeah. Now it's like you know almost four hundred thousand. Well, and through that time where the uh, markets were going crazy, the mortgages were much bigger, right? You're getting people in five percent down, purchasing for seven, well, between five and ten percent, purchasing for seven hundred thousand. That's a much bigger mortgage, but the rates were so low, you could afford the payments. Mm. So. And they still can, and they're hoping that in the next two or three years, yes, they better they come, come down, down again. They come down exactly. Because we could be, if they don't come down substantially, we could be in for a bit of a mess when all these people have to renew. Correct? Yeah. They're coming down though. Yeah, they're they're, coming, they're down, coming down. Though. Listen, we you think you next year. Yeah. You asked me you asked me when's the last time I flipped a property. I just got a text from Petra. Her she just flipped a property. Remember her house? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, her house was spectacular. She she bought a house that was just one of the ugliest homes I've ever seen. <laughs> and in fact, I wouldn't even show it to her. It was so ugly. <laughs> and uh, she took this ugly duckling and turned it into, well, Greg, you shot the pictures. It was gorgeous. She did such an amazing job. So good that there's there's stagers that are reaching out to her, asking her to come work there. And wow. Interior designers. So I saw the pictures on Facebook. It was beautiful. Oh, she did an amazing job. Yeah. She, she's a talent, though. She's such a talent. And she was smart enough not to put you in any of the pictures. Yes, she was. <laughs> you know what? She, she's so, so talented in everything she does. The only thing she's really not good at is her choice in men, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> she fails there for sure, but, Pretty but much a given. that's a given. But everything else, she's How are so tough. <laughs> <laughs> why is she staying? Seriously. <laughs> you know why, Barbie? Because she's in love. That's why. Oh, that's, yeah. so that's like Paul calling last week to wish me, or not last week, a couple of weeks ago when I was here with Dora, say, Welcome back to the show. It's like, that's really nice, Paul. But how often do you say nice and Paul in the same sentence? Oh, that is. BS Barbie, I'm a really nice guy, and I was happy to see you back on the show. And you did a very good job, Thank just you. like you did today. Very good job. Thank you. Kumbaya. <laughs> I, pre I prefer bounce. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> so we can, we're pretty much agreed that it's going to be pretty flat until at least early January, right? Not much yeah, happening. Is no, the no, January. no. There's not, and I think Great. I think Dora touched on it uh, last week. Uh, was it last week when you were on Barbara? No, the week before. She touched on yeah. it the week before, where she was saying, you know, is there? Do you put your house on the market right now? Well, you know what? If you're someone who wants to enjoy Christmas and not have people run through your house, then maybe not. But there's an argument that yes, you put your house on the market now. I'll, I'll. I'll I won't sugarcoat it and say there's a great chance you're going to get your home sold during the December market, but anybody going through your house in December is a serious buyer. Yeah, there, I was no going one's, to say it's the diehards. Right? No one's shopping for yeah. fun during December, and just like open houses, like I'm telling my agents to get out there and do some open houses. There, it's December. I'm like, 
anyone going through an open house in December is a serious buyer. You go through an open house in July, it's maybe you're walking down the street with your husband or wife and you just want to go take a look at a house. Whereas in December, it's cold. Don't forget, a lot of transfers will happen in the new year too. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. People change yeah. their life around based on, okay, the new year's yep. coming, so we're going to do this. Yep. But I will tell you, if you are waiting till the new year, don't wait too long because we're going to have a lot of influx of le leftover listings and people about to hit the market. So there's going to be a lot of listings hitting quick. So I would strongly suggest if you're thinking of doing it, get us in sooner than later. But if you're thinking of doing it, get it done soon in January. Well, don't, here's the deal, don't though, wait. agents are not as busy right now. So if you want some great information on what you have yeah. to do to get your house ready, yeah. get an agent in now, and at least you can, then you can create your budget of what you have to do, how long it's gonna take, when you really wanna hit the market. The, the best part of our job is giving the right advice to help you make money. And, and get your pre-approval. Yes, absolutely. And get a pre-approval even if you got one four months ago. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because you never know where rates are going. Exactly. But I can tell you where they are going. Down. Down, Down chicka bow. Bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, no, it, it's, it's, you know, I've been saying this for the longest time. We are, I believe, no, now take out December 7th announcement where we are going to be increased by a quarter to yeah. a half a point. Yeah. I feel like that is it. Even though some, uh, some people are saying that we're going to see some more increases in January. I, I can't see how. I can't see you. Uh -huh. No, we feel like that's it. Uh, that's it we're as well. well, we're headed. We're, we're, we are going to a recession. But as I mentioned you know, last week, our last five recessions, our market never went down in our last five recessions. In the United States, their last 11 sessions, they've only gone down their housing market twice in 11 recessions. So we are going to a recession and our market is not going to go down. Our market is going to go the other way. And once we get the rates coming down, the buying power is going to increase and the people are going to come out of the woodwork. Birthdays, Barb, you got none? I got no birthdays today. She doesn't come prepared at all. Not wow. a vowel. Nothing. No vowels. <laughs> I'm surprised no I'm surprised Frank didn't call in and wish someone a happy birthday. Like Surely she's you've got something, Paul. <laughs> um, <laughs> what what month are we? December. Oh, what day are we? You oh, know what? Today. We're the third. <laughs> We're the third. You know what? Before on in five days on the eighth. It's my parents' wedding anniversary. Oh, nice. Oh. So I want to wish my parents a happy wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. That's so yep. sweet. How many years? Long time. Long time, yeah. Long. Thanks for saving me there, Steve. <laughs> the key to their successful marriage? Paul moved out young. Yes, yes. I, you moved out playing hockey at 16, so the, the, their, their marriage thrived after I moved out. Paul at PaulRushforth.com. Barb, how do we get a hold of you? Barb K at MortgageBrokersOttawa.com. Have a great week. Have a great week.